Hi, I'm Nisha DeGaring, host of Good Things Utah, and I've been a longtime supporter of Todd's Belief Cast. I hope you find inspiration in the courageous stories shared by the amazing people Todd features on his show. The guests serve as shoulders for us to stand on, allowing us to see a little further and cultivate belief in oneself. Remember, you have the dignity and power to change. I encourage you to keep striving and believing in yourself. Enjoy today's podcast. Welcome back, everybody. This is Todd Sylvester with the Todd Inspires Belief Cast. Thank you once again for tuning in. As always, I can't thank you guys enough for believing in me and believing in this message that we share weekly. Uh, You guys have been fantastic in the way you share it with other people and we're getting the word out. It's just amazing to me. So thank you. I don't take any credit other than it's, you know, that I'm bringing these amazing people on my show. (laughs) Um, Today's going to be no different. But before we get to uh, my uh, guest, I got to give a shout out to our sponsors. We have um, Elevate Wellness uh, Aesthetics, uh, Mori Nutrition, Thread Wallets, and Wasatch Recovery. Um, th- they've been a supporter. All of them have been supporters for a long time now. Thank you for, for believing me as well. The music you heard at the beginning and at the end of the podcast is by my good friend Paul Cardall. Um, he's an award-winning pianist, and uh, most of you probably know who he is. He's amazing. And so thank you, Paul, for letting us use your beautiful music. It really brings a great tone and uh, feeling for these podcasts. So, And today, um, we're joined by Paris Tews. Paris, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really honored to be here. Yeah. You have such incredible guests, and I feel <laughs> I feel so lucky that I get to be in the lineup. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. No, I feel honored. Um, I've had your mom on. I've had your brother on. And, you know, I've, I, I think the world of your family uh, especially your mom, because I think I know her best. But, you know, we were just talking about this before we went live is, you know, she's a go-getter. She absolutely is. And she does, you know, and she raises go-getters. <laughs> she does. She does. <laughs> and that's, you know, but I do respect, you know, just the way you guys carry yourselves and the way you do things. And um, you have your own beautiful family. And I want to give a little background on Paris. Um uh, she went to BYU, but you left BYU to, to pursue a career in photography, yeah. which you're really good at, and it's mm-hmm. taking you around the world. I think you have a blog around it. Yeah. I, Is that correct? It's mostly just just Instagram a little bit. But okay. Yeah. Okay. I documented our travels there. And- yeah. So you're very passionate about that. Um, you're the co-host of your own podcast called Kindred Conversations, and you help women find joy in early motherhood. And you know that because you have three of your own children. I do. You have a, a, a newborn. Well, you know, five months. That's a newborn Feels to like me, newborn. right? Yeah. 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 And, um, but yeah, you're a very passionate person. You love being kind to people. I think that's a, a way to say that. Is that thank, accurate? Thank you. I, it's definitely something that's very important to me. Yeah. And you'll appreciate this. My podcast, Kindred Conversations, is actually named after my mom. Her last name is Kindred. So oh, her I maiden didn't... name is Kindred. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. So that was a little nod to her and her family. And you're absolutely right. She definitely raised me and all of my siblings in a way that, you know, she really taught us habits and yeah. even everything you talk about on your podcast, you know, establishing good habits that yeah. can help you, you know, be positive and and feel inspired and that was really part of my mom's parenting and it has affected all of us as you as you can tell and as yeah. you've learned I'm sure from interviewing Easton and my Absolutely. mom. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm I'm really I'm blown away and 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 again you guys have had your struggles and battles and and that's also very you know hard to hear those things sometimes but the way you guys carried yourself through those tough times has been really inspiring to me. Oh, and 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 my listeners and you know um, I have a lot of long, young listeners and most of them are female. So your, your message today, Paris is going to be so good. And I'm so excited to hear, you know, just your story and where I'd like to start is maybe tell us a little bit about uh, your childhood, maybe a little bit about growing up and, and just, we'll kind of take it from there. Okay. Sounds great. Yeah. So I, um, I am the oldest in my family my dad's a doctor. So I was a a med school child yeah and so (laughs) the first like 10 years of my life we were just moving around I've I think by the time I was 20 I'd moved 20 times wow and uh it's just yeah we we bounced around quite a bit and um so I grew up in Texas Oklahoma San Diego and then Colorado and then eventually 
by the time I was in middle school, we moved we moved houses and towns a little bit, but yeah. we were in Colorado from middle school on for me. Uh, but I think that definitely defined my my life a little bit because sure. and and honestly in a very positive way I'm grateful that my parents had the confidence in me that I could do that because I could yeah and you know it taught me to make friends wherever I go and right. feel confident and <laughs> and um, then when I was in Colorado actually I met I met my husband and I was 13 when I met him and we were just we we were just friends for a while but right. um then I went to BYU and I loved studying there I married my husband shortly after and um yeah I did two and a half years at BYU really thoroughly enjoyed my education and my right. experience there yeah. and then left to pursue photography like you mentioned yeah and I mostly did weddings because that's I just wanted to be really good at one thing yeah. So I mostly did weddings, but I also traveled with a couple of companies and we went all over the world and it was just such a remarkable experience. You know, I got married young and I had kids yeah. young and I, I knew I wanted to have kids young, but I wanted to live as much life as I sure. could. Not even before yeah. I had kids. I still try and live my <laughs> life in a big way, Yeah. but especially knowing that that was a, a goal of mine, I just really wanted to to live big before I did that. And so that's yeah. kind of what, where I was up until motherhood. And then yeah, became a mom and yeah. have been just dealing with that transition and trying to navigate that in a way that feels graceful and true to myself. And that's eventually where the podcast came in as well. Yeah. Uh, we'll get more into that for sure. You know, moving around, you, you, you know, you said it was actually pretty good for you and, you know, cause I often hear, man, it was so challenging because, you know, I've got this group of friends where I'm, I'm feeling comfortable and mm -hmm. all of a sudden now we got to move again. So d did you find yourself to at times struggling at all during those times, even though, you know, most of most of the time you enjoyed it? Yeah, for sure. There were definitely people that I would have to leave and it would be hard for me. But I also I also think like to my parents credit especially as we were moving when I was a little bit older it was yeah. it was the best thing for our for our family I never felt like I was getting thrown under <laughs> thrown under the bus like that's good I always felt like it was in my best interest yeah. which I'm I'm grateful for and I know that that can't always be the case you know sometimes you have to do things that that don't feel good but you got to do them anyway and but yeah there were definitely difficulties that came with that I mean just readjusting and trying to find my footing yeah was it was tricky, but like I said, I feel like life skills came from that. And actually, interestingly enough, my husband actually has moved several times as well. Ha yeah, as a child, and then now <laughs> as adults, we're like, okay, we want to put we want to put some roots down. But it definitely has impacted who we are. Right. So you you know you mentioned that you got really good at making friends, and in order to do that, you gotta probably push through some fear, mm -hmm. right? Which teaches you to be more confident. Do you feel like that's one of the gifts that came from it is being more confident with yourself? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that about anything that we go through, whatever experience it is, there are hardships that come with it. And there, we also come out of it different in some yeah. way. And we gain skills that we wouldn't otherwise have. And that's one that I can look at really clearly and say, like, yeah, I, I know how to, I know how to connect with almost anyone. I can connect yeah. with people that I don't know very well. And my parents always taught to, you know, you ask, you ask people questions about themselves. You get to know them. You, yeah. you make people around you feel loved. And that's how you make friends. You don't make friends by trying to get people to be interested in you. You make friends by being truly interested in the people around you. Yeah. And so because of that, you know, I made friends with people that I, didn't know very well and yeah. am able to connect with people more easily. Yeah. Why, why is kind being kind so important to you? Honestly, because I think I've seen what it does to me when people are kind to me. Yeah. And I just believe that we owe each other that as humans to be kind, yeah. to yeah. give each other the benefit of the doubt. And, mm. you know, everyone everyone has their own story everyone is going through something and sometimes an act of kindness can change someone's world it can definitely change someone's day yeah and i have been the re on the receiving of end of that more times than i can count yeah wow you know because 
you know, and I've I've heard that you know when we're kind to someone what it does to our own, you know, psyche and the way we carry ourselves. And you're right. I mean, I've been on the re- you know receiving end of a lot of kindness in my life as well. And especially when I'm, even at times when I was doing the wrong thing and that I shouldn't be doing and to have that, it's, it's almost like it gives you the, you know, kind of woke me up a little bit like, yeah. man, I got, I got to be better. Yeah. You know, what do you think of that? Uh, no, I absolutely agree. And I, I'm just thinking becoming a mom has been such a testament of that to me (laughs) because I my oldest just barely turned five and everywhere I go I honestly need help I it's just (laughs) my kids are a handful sure and I really can't do it on my own it makes me think I was at the (laughs) store the other day and I I just I only had two of my kids at the time actually but I had my four month old and my my barely two year old I don't even know if she was quite two yet but so I had these two two babies really and my two-year-old threw a little tantrum in the store and I didn't have a stroller at the time so I'm trying to you know carry my daughter that's just going like (laughs) like she's like noodling her body so I'm trying to pick her up my other baby's crying and I'm like trying to get them to the register and this woman comes up to me and she's like can I help you can I and she was so warm and so kind she's like can I can I hold your daughter? And my daughter that was throwing the tantrum yeah. just went to her immediately. Really? And she wow. held her and she went to the checkout with me and then she walked her to my car with me and put her in my car seat. And for a second, I was kind of like, oh, this is so embarrassing. Yeah. And <laughs> I just, you know, you know, I just dropped. I'm like, you know what? I, I don't need my pride. That was sure. so kind. Yeah. That was so kind. And it made me feel so connected to her and, you know, you're a parent yourself yeah. and it's so cool knowing we share this experience right. and everyone that has a kid knows what it's like to love those <laughs> kids and to know what it's yeah. like to, you know, have to humble yourself and ask for help. Big time. And yeah. <laughs> that has been such a cool thing about becoming a parent is needing the people around me and accepting that help and being able to experience the kindness of strangers like I never have before because yeah. people are so not not always but yeah I find that if you look for it people are so kind I to agree. mothers and they are so quick to offer help and it's been a privilege to get to experience that yeah I would remember when my kids were younger you know my wife would go on like maybe a little girl's trip with her sis with yeah. her sisters and stuff and I'd have the kids for the weekend and, and then it'd be like <laughs> you know, I would be I like, I can't do this. You know, four kids, how do I handle this? And and um, people would always pitch in and those those type of things was it was always great and yeah. well needed in the moment, you yeah. know. Yeah, absolutely. So what what were you like as a child? Were you, you know, I mean you're a pretty confident person, you carry yourself well in my Thank opinion. You. And you. yeah, you're welcome. Were you always like that as a younger kid? Did you ever struggle with self esteem issues or things like that that most of us go through you know (laughs) yeah I mean there are definitely there are definitely moments but I you know and credit to my parents again I really do think that I was raised to believe that I am just inherently enough and hopefully I'm raising my kids that way as well and of course of course there of course I struggled with self-esteem like any teenager and things like that but ultimately you know I was raised to believe that I am just worthy just because just because I'm a human and wow. because everyone is inherent and and you know what I think too when when you believe that about yourself you believe that about other people yeah, as well. Totally. And so I I am worthy of good things and and so are you and so is and so is everybody. Mm. And I just I really really truly believe that at, at my core. What a gift for you to be taught that. Yeah. And it chokes me up because, you know, I, I work with clients every day and the number one reason why they're struggling is because they believe they're not good enough. Like they truly to their core absolutely believe it and it plays out in every area of their life. And it's nothing that I have done. It is nothing. Yeah. It's nothing about where I come from that makes me good enough. I am good enough because I because I am and because yeah. I inherently am and yeah. because everyone inherently yeah. is and it doesn't make... <laughs> anyone yeah. better than anyone we are just all trying we're all doing our best and there's something that like I wish I wish that I could tell everyone and it's something that is so important to me about my podcast is you know mom's listening and mom's like right. you know we're messing up and we're not doing things perfectly and we're not we're not good because of anything that we're doing but it's just because yeah. of who we are 
And I love what you said. Um, when we when we believe that in ourselves, it's easy for us to then see it in others. Yeah, yeah. It's not unique. It's not unique to me. It's, yeah. It's everyone. Yeah, I really do believe that's the number one reason why people are struggling in this world. It comes down to that belief: I'm just not good enough. And that you know, like breaks like it that breaks my heart. Phrase, yeah. it breaks my heart. Yeah, it breaks my heart because I just hope anyone listening to this, like, if that is one thing you take away, you are good enough. You yeah. don't need to do anything right. to be good enough. You just are. Yeah, I love that. Thanks for sharing that. That's powerful. Thank, thanks for asking. Yeah, me. and I know, and and again, shout out to your parents who obviously understand this as well because <laughs> yeah. I know that, you know, um, with them, but to, for them to teach their kids that, I mean, and again, yeah, anyone listening to this, I mean, I think I'd love to hear your thoughts on this too, Paris, that knowing who you are plays a part in that. And I would love to hear your thoughts on that because I think one of the, one of the biggest things also that I like to help teach my clients is help, to help have them answer the question, who are you? Yeah. What do you think of that? Yeah, I I hope it's I hope it's all right. I say I please I believe I'm a daughter of God. Absolutely. And I believe that everyone around me is a child of God. Mm. And you know, I believe that we are loved by parents in heaven that love us. Mm -hmm. And I I really feel that and I believe that with that there is an innate goodness in everyone. Yeah. There's an innate good in my kids when they're throwing tantrums and there's innate goodness in people when they're giving yeah. me side eye you know like even when people aren't being kind to us like I do believe yeah. that we can give each other the benefit of the doubt and believe that we are innately good yeah so <clears throat> if I was to ask you this question who are you other than you're a child of God yeah well let's say it this way what what are the characteristics of of the God you worship Oh, that's a great question. You know, I believe in a God who is loving and who loves us. Mm. And, you know, I believe in a God who, who, because I am his child, I believe that he has expectations of me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that's a delicate balance because yeah. I do believe that, that I am innately worthy and we are all innately worthy. And because, and, and because we are, children of God like we have he expects things of us and he wants the best for us and you know I think becoming a parent I've seen that more than ever I believe that yeah. more now than ever right you know I my kids I will love them no matter what <laughs> like there is yeah. nothing they could do that would make me not so love them so much for sure but I also really want the best for them and I mm -hmm. want them to be happy and I want them to be fulfilled and I believe that God expects things of me too because he wants the best for me so he wants yeah. me to have these healthy habits and yeah you know when I don't have them it doesn't make him love me less and it doesn't make me less worthy but it does impact my my life and yeah. what I'm able to get out of my experience here on earth and so that ties into it as well that's beautifully said you know you think of all three of your children what what are some of the qualities you see in your children just by observing them? Like, what are some of the characteristics they have? That's a great question. My my son, who's five, he he's just like sunshine. Yeah. You know, I <laughs> love going places with him because he just t he wants to talk to everyone. Yeah. He wants to connect with everyone. And my daughter, who's two, her first word was hi. You know, they just <laughs> there is no barriers with yeah. them. You know? I know, right? It's just like they're so quick to love. And I love, I love learning that from them. Mm -hmm. It inspires, it inspires me. Yeah. And you know, they're, they're so resilient too. Right. You know, they, yeah. they work, they bounce back so quickly and they're so incredibly forgiving. And I, as a parent am far from the perfect parent and I have to apologize to them and they're <laughs> right. so quick to forgive me and I'm yeah. always in I'm always in awe like am I as quick to forgive other people when <laughs> right. they're making me frustrated but my kids <laughs> so quickly will yeah. just you know it's okay mom and just yeah. fully love me unconditionally and I really try to be more like that yeah I love that well, I want to hear your thoughts on this too like when I when I look at kids you know I have a granddaughter now she's five she her name or she's six now I think yeah Olivia and you know she's in first grade and then I have a grandson he's uh he's two and I look at their characteristics and I you know I look at them and they've got love and 
they've got forgiveness like you were just yeah. saying they've got understanding they're brave they're they're tenacious they're outgoing and i think those same characteristics that make up them are the exact same way i could describe god yeah god is loving understanding courageous forgiving the i really love that i mean and and you know it's almost like well where did the kids get those characteristics yeah like they it's like in their dna came that way right yeah. yeah and that's why i love what you said even earlier when you said i'm good enough because i am yeah. i am here therefore i'm good enough yeah and talking about kids with talking about confidence you know kids come confident right. they come confident right. and that self-consciousness yeah. is something that we learn from the world that is Gosh, not something that's so true isn't that isn't that interesting to see yeah wow so you know Again, I love how you put that because I'm just connecting these amazing dots right now. Like when you, when you've been taught by your parents, hey, you're enough, but you didn't need to be told that when you were this child. You just knew it inherently. Yeah. You just yeah. that's what you how you carried yourself. Yeah. You see it in your own children. But you know, you're right. You know, the world comes into play at times in our lives and we start maybe doubting ourselves and telling ourselves a different story and maybe even going, I'm just not good enough because I messed up here and I didn't do this yeah. or whatever. But to be able to 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 work through that and go, no, I, I'm enough even though I made a mistake. Yeah. Right? I don't know. I just, I'm just connecting these dots right now. It's yeah. fascinating. I'm just thinking about my little two-year-old daughter. Her, uh -huh. her name's Lola and she's just... Lola. Love that. She's the best. But yesterday <laughs> we were going to dinner and just with all the confidence in the world, she put on her outfit and she put on her brother's swimsuit <laughs> and then her little bloomers over it and then a dress that was too small and then her brother's shirt. And she was just, she walked into in and out like she owned the place. <laughs> and I just look at her. I'm like, I want to be more like yeah, Lola. Totally. Because she, that girl knows who she is. Yeah. And she's got confidence. And then, you know, she'll get a little older and she'll realize like, oh, you know, I'm the only I'm the only little girl in here wearing board shirt shorts. Yeah, right. with, yeah. with stuff over it, <laughs> and and that's okay. But I yeah. I hope we can just all channel that part of us that that feels confident in our own preferences and in our, our own choices and our yeah. own self worth. No, I love that. So you you have a podcast called uh, Kindred Conversations, mm -hmm. and again, you're trying to help women find joy in early motherhood. And other things. I mean, I'm sure there's all kinds of topics you guys are talking about. Yeah. T tell us a little bit about why why you're doing this and what what someone would expect if they went and listened to to what you're are you know what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Um, motherhood can feel a little bit like Groundhog Day sometimes. You know, yeah. we wake up, we do the same things, and and you know, like I mentioned. I love living a life that feels really, that feels really big. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I kind of went from this point where I was traveling all the time and doing all these things that like looked really, looked really big from the outside. And then now my life feels much smaller, but in a way that is so important and yeah. so valuable. And I just really, really believe that we, as mothers, you know, it's so easy to kind of brush our own needs aside and right. in favor of what our kids need and that in so many ways that's so natural and and you know it's really easy to stop taking care of yourself when you have kids yeah. and i'm just so passionate that we need to be taking care of ourselves and we need to be mm. investing in ourselves and you know regardless of whether you're a stay-at-home mom or a working mom like you are more than just a mom you are a full human who is a mom to these kids and i think that when you or that when we are um, investing in ourselves and we are allowing ourselves to have hobbies and pursuits, <laughs> then you know then we're whole yeah. people and we are whole right. people that are mothers. And I think that that only benefits our kids as well as us. And so really the goal with Kindred Conversations is to have this community where we know that we're in this together and mm -hmm. we are working through things together and we are honest about our experiences and you know also working to to cultivate these skills and habits that will bless our lives and our children's lives. Love it. Sounds amazing. So what does it look like for you? Like when you say invest in yourself, how, what, what would you say you do to, to help invest in yourself? Yeah. yeah, that's a great question. Honestly, for me, part of that is the podcast. 
you know, it's, yeah. it's not super convenient. We have an episode come out every week <laughs> uh-huh. and you know, <laughs> oh, podcasting yeah. it's, it's work. Sure. It's work. And you know, part of it is like, I am willing to take that time from my family because yeah. it's something that I'm really passionate about mm-hmm. and it's not convenient for my family, but I'm passionate about it. And I'm glad that my kids can see me working on something that I, that I care about and that brings value yeah. to my life. And, um, you know, I like when, the, when it warms up, I like to go play pickleball with my friends yeah. or have a girl's night. And sometimes that can be hard for my kids to see, but ultimately I want, espe- especially my daughters, I want them to know right. like, my mom, my mom is happy. My mom, my mom loves, loves her life and she loves being my mom. And, yeah. and I think that that's really important for our kids to see. Boy, you said that beautifully. Like your mom is happy and she showed you I'm yeah. happy. Yeah. Like a, it's almost like it's okay to be happy. Yeah, right? absolutely, absolutely. And to be happy, you know, we gotta we gotta be taking care of ourselves, and yeah. we gotta be putting in putting in that work because, it, you know, we can't just passively sit back and like, oh, I hope I hope I like being a mom. I hope I hope this yeah. goes well. You know, I want to be. I want to be, you know, taking care of my body and yeah, I right. want to be going on walks and enjoying the sunshine and cultivating friendships that, you know, being a mom is one humongous part of what makes my life yeah. rich. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like I, it's one part. It's one part. Yeah. yeah. And the big, and the biggest part, it is the biggest part. It's the most important thing to me, but it is only that part of my life is only blessed and enriched when I and not neglecting the other parts of me as well. Right. Well, you know, I've heard it said that you can't lift someone to higher ground unless you're standing there yourself. Absolutely. So if we don't take care of ourselves, we're going to burn out. We're going to get exhausted. Absolutely. You know? And as parents, I think we're the most susceptible to yeah. that. Right. So, th- yeah. No, I love that you do those things and you you realize how important that is. And I just, I, I know that sounds so simple, but showing my kids I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think that's, it's like, hello yeah right no. but but i think sometimes we don't do that yeah i that was something and we talk about th- this in our podcast a lot like i i want to enjoy motherhood mm. i want to enjoy it and yeah. i don't want to just be like all right i'm just going to sacrifice myself to motherhood for the next <laughs> few years and just like kind of yeah. grit my teeth and get through it and there are definitely days like that of mm-hmm. course but at the end of the day like i i want to love this experience and and like you said i I want my kids to see me loving being their mom. Right on. I love it. So I know you're you're a woman of faith Mm -hmm. and that means a lot to you as well. Talk a little bit about that and why is that so important to you? You know, honestly, a huge part of it is, like I said, just knowing that I am a child of God and Mm -hmm. that everyone around me is a child of God. And honestly, too, just knowing that I'm never alone that's a core belief for me. And I believe I have a savior and that he knows how I feel and knowing that I can have peace no matter the circumstances. That's, that's a really big deal for me. You know, my, my father-in-law passed away just, um, a few months ago, Mm. actually right after my daughter was born. I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. Thank you. And it was just this really interesting mix of emotions because you know, especially my husband, he's really, really grieving and our baby was 10 days old. So we have this yeah. brand new baby and yeah. we've lost, we've lost my husband's dad and just kind of realizing that it can all coexist. And I believe that I have a savior that because of him, I can feel peace yeah. even when things are hard. It's never, no matter what happens, yeah. life is never hopeless because I believe that because of him, all will be made right. And yeah, that piece just brings me so much contentment. Wow. Yeah, that's those are, yeah, tough times. But yet, I mean, you, you hear you have this blessing of the newborn and then yeah, you guys lose someone who's really close to you. But maybe a better way of saying that is you didn't you didn't lose anyone yeah. because you know you're going to see him again. Is that accurate? Yeah, that that is absolutely what I believe in having that. Yeah. Having that belief is something that just brings me so much peace. Yeah. Yeah, cuz I I I believe in that too, honestly. And I can't prove it to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I hope I get to see everyone again, you know? Yeah. I hope uh, you know, cuz it makes more sense to me. Yeah. 
and that does bring me some peace as well. So I'm, I'm glad that you see it that way. And, and, and I, and I do respect that you're, you know, you, you, you wear your faith on your sleeve and I think that's good. And I appreciate that about you and your family, you know, and I see that with all your family members. It's really cool. Thank you. Yeah. We, we definitely as a family have relied on our faith a lot. Yeah. Um, I know you love helping people too, like you're a helper (laughs) and why, why is that important to you? And you know, what, what, why do you think that's something we should also be, you know, mindful of? You know, I think it goes back to the, to the, kindness you know I Mm -hmm. I need help I need help so whenever I am in a position to offer it I'm happy to do so and especially right now those the way that I'm able to do that the ways that I'm able to do that they're small you know I'm not at a point where I can go on like a big humanitarian trip and be away from my family for a (laughs) couple of weeks and doing so the ways that I have to help right now are are small they're small and they're simple and I'm trying to find the beauty in that as well right because the ways that people help me that are small and simple make a huge difference in my life yeah and it also too just comes down to loving the people around me and I'm so great I'm so blessed with just wonderful relationships yeah. and it's natural to want to help them and to cultivate yeah. those friendships. And, and a big part of that for me is, you know, I try to be a helper, but I also really try to receive help and yeah. that's hard. Right. It's really hard to do it. Like it's, yeah. I have to humble myself and I do like when people <laughs> offer help, I, I really do try to accept it because that really deepens relationships. It's a two way street. You know, if I'm doing something for someone all the time, yeah. but I'm not letting them help me, that's not really a friendship. And so yeah. it has to go both ways. And so I really believe in, you know, accepting help as well. Yeah. That's some, sometimes that's hard. I don't know why it shouldn't be, but it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it totally is. Yeah. But, but we, you know, I, I know that about you and your family. You guys are always out, you know, you know, helping those that are struggling. And I had a client once share this with me and, and my listeners will know that I, sh- I share this a lot, but it really means so much to me. And I had a client share this and I thought, I want to, I want to put it to my memory because it was so profound. He said, I try to find myself, myself. I could not see. I tried to find my God. My God eluded me. I tried to find my brother. I found all three. Right. And I just thought, there it is. And I think, is it fair to say, and I'd love to hear your thoughts, Paris, um, when we're helping someone, it's almost like that's where I feel closest to God, honestly. Oh, what do you think? No, I absolutely believe that. I've never heard that before. And I, I really love that. I think that is so powerful. And my, you know, again, back to my parents, I I just going to (laughs) talk about them a lot because they're wonderful. Shout out to the parents. Yeah. Yeah. But that was one thing that I was taught. If you are sad, go go help somebody. Go find somebody to help. Go Ooh. find someone to serve. And, yeah. you know, sometimes when, I, when I'm feeling down, it's because I'm thinking about myself a little too much. Right. <laughs> and so when I, when I, like, look outward, I'm able to – there's no better serotonin boost than helping right. someone out. 100%, yeah. Well, speaking of, like, you know, there's times when we're down, right? When you're down, Paris, who who who's the who do you turn to in those moments? Yeah, that's a great question. Honestly, I I'm quick to confide in a friend or my sister or my mom or my yeah. husband. I <laughs> I do I don't really bottle things up, which probably won't surprise you. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I'm I'm quick I'm quick to let out my emotions and also okay, good. You know, I I will get outside in the sunshine I'll go on a run and not that it not that it heals all wounds but it definitely helps me just it helps me get a little bit more perspective and see things I think a little bit more clearly and yeah yeah not that it fixes things but it definitely will help no I agree with all of that and you know and yeah you you definitely speak your mind which I think you know and you share your emotions which is you know someone who's emotionally intelligent to be completely honest that's what it is and that's what i'm trying to teach my clients all the time emotional intelligence because they bottled up their emotions and they won't share it okay and it's so interesting becoming a parent because now i i I just see the world differently you know i i used to read a ton of self-help books and now i mostly read parenting books (laughs) and yeah i learned so much about myself by reading these parenting books and you know, one of my f- favorite ones I just read, it's by Dr. Becky Kennedy and it's called Good Insight. And actually her whole, her whole 
shtick is we are innately good inside and our kids are innately good inside mm. and we treat them that way. And, yeah. we, and awesome. anyways, but, sh- but emotional intelligence is also, you know, a huge thing I'm trying to teach in my children. And so I'm teaching them, like, if you are upset, like you are allowed to be upset. Right. You know, that doesn't mean you're allowed to act however you want, but you're allowed to feel those feelings. And I am a safe place for you for those feelings. And it's nice. been a good reflection for me as well. You know, it is healthy to feel your feelings. And I think I've, learned that more than ever as I'm trying to teach it to my kids. Yeah. What's been one of the biggest challenges is being a mom? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, probably one of the biggest challenges is just honestly just trying to make sure that I, I'm juggling so many things at once. Mm-hmm. And just constantly checking in and making sure that I am, you know, really doing it how I want to do it and not just doing it on autopilot. Because yeah, like like I mentioned, sometimes it feels like Groundhog Day and I'm just trying to get <laughs> right. get things done. And, yeah. and the biggest challenge has just been being intentional and taking a step back and realizing, okay, I, I want... I want to raise emotionally intelligent kids and maybe my gut, not necessarily gut instinct, but my instant reaction isn't, isn't what's best. And so I'm trying to rewire and reroute and just be so intentional because I'm never going to do anything more important than raising these kids. Right. And just really being so focused on how I'm doing it is probably the biggest challenge I'd say. Yeah. And I think, Every mom out there would agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, it's well said. I think, you know, you know, being a father myself and just, you know, I, I, I look at women and think of what they go through to have, you know, through the pregnancies. And I'm like, man, we got it easy compared to <laughs> you guys. But, to, you know, even my own wife watching her just nurture our children in such a way, I just would always be in awe. I'd be like, my, my goodness. Like, man, I hope I can contribute here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Men, men are great too, but women, yeah. like, women are special. They, they really, really are. are. <laughs> I agree. 100%. You know, and I look at the women around me just raising their kids, and I am in awe. <laughs> I'm in awe of them. I am in awe, I am in awe of them. And, you know, yeah. the men are great too, but nothing brings, <laughs> nothing makes me more proud to be a woman than being a mom. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. I've got, you know, I want to ask you this. You know, I'm really big about our um, our core beliefs that we have about ourselves. Yeah. We've talked about a really positive one. You, you know, you know you're enough. That's a belief system you have. Mm-hmm. What are, is there a belief that you've struggled with about yourself that's kind of held you back sometimes? Is there is there something that that you find yourself, man? Why why am I buying into this and I'm wrestling with this a little bit? That's a good question. Um. And maybe there's nothing. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, there are definitely, are. there's, there are of course things that I've struggled with. I think that something that I've gotten a lot better at is letting go of judgment for other, for other people. Okay. And, yeah. you know, I think just the more, I, I do believe, I do believe that I've always like been able to see people as, you know, as good. But, you know, I, I think the more life experience that I get, the just the less that I could ever judge another person's actions. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. that's something I'm, I'm always working on. But really, like, I would say just the older I get and the more life experiences I have, like, that is something that I've overcome is I, I can, I can not, nec- even if I can't relate to someone, like, I really just... I've lost any capacity to ju- judge in yeah. the, in a positive way. Sure, because, yeah. You know, just the the more life has kind of thrown at me, the more I just realize, you know, like I this is a really really s- silly small example, but you know, before you're a parent, you know everything about parenting, right? Oh yeah. And then you right. get older and you just realize, like, I know nothing. And yeah. this is a really silly example, but <laughs> I can apply it over so many different areas of my life. Yeah. I used to see parents, you know, with their kids on leashes in an airport <laughs> or something, and I would be like oh my gosh, like how, how could they? Like, yeah. like put them on a leash. Like seriously. Yeah. And now, and now let me just tell you now, if I, <laughs> if I see a parent with their kid on a leash, I'm like, 
good for you. Yeah. Good for you. You I got get your it. kids. <laughs> I totally get it. Like you are doing what you need to do to keep your kids safe and props to you. And yeah. I've, you know, I, I just believe that about, about kind of everything now is we are all just really doing our best. And yeah. the more I mature, the more I really believe that. Totally. You know, I, um, I'm a big fan of, uh, James Allen. He wrote the book he's famous for as a man thinketh. Oh yeah. And I've got his book over here. It's a really thick one. It's all of his writings in one book, but I was reading the other day. He said it's so beautifully and I'm going to try to do my best to repeat it. But he said, the saint used to be the sinner. The sinner will one day be a saint. This, the, the saint used to occupy the same place as the sinner. And it's, it's in the chapter on sympathy mm-hmm. and understanding that everyone's where they're at and we shouldn't judge because we were once in that spot. Yeah. If that makes sense, right? Like, you know, just like you even said, watching, you know, it, it, the, the mom that was trying to keep her kids in line and, you know, protecting them with, you know, having them yeah. hooked to a leash, if you will, yeah. so that she didn't lose them. If we could understand that woman's story and why she did that, who knows? Maybe she lost one of her child. One, one of yeah. her child got kidnapped. We would go, oh, now I totally get why, you know, I think if we understood where these people are really coming from, it would be hard to, like, judge them in a negative way. Yeah, absolutely. I think any judgment really just comes from a place of, not understanding. I right. think if you Ignorance, take the time yeah. to know anyone and to know anyone's story, like you will have so much love for them and yeah. no judgment because yeah. everyone is everyone is just trying. Right. I couldn't agree more. So, you know, you're a very passionate person. You love what you do. You're doing photography. You've got your podcast. You're a mom. Um, what, what are some other plans that you want to do if you haven't even started? Do you have like some goals in mind and some things that you're thinking, man, I want to be doing this? Yeah. You know, we actually have, um, we're coming out with a product for our, for our podcast. Oh. I'm so proud of. We've been working on them so hard, and we have these conversation cards, basically designed for women who are gathering, and they're very cool. They're a little bit lighthearted, but also have the potential to, you know, create some depth. And I've been working with my friend Brittany on them, and I'm really, really proud of them. And I'm so excited to. That's exciting to put them out into the world. So I'm excited about that, and you know, I'm excited. My daughter, she's five months old, and I'm looking forward to her sleeping a little bit better so that I can, <laughs> right. you know, go on a run in the morning before she wakes up or play tennis. And I'm honestly like, I'm looking forward to that. And yeah, I feel sure. like that's kind of representative of my life right now. You know, right. I have these small and simple <laughs> things that bring me a lot of joy. And that's what I'm looking forward to right now. No, I love that. There's simplicity is amazing, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's powerful. Yeah. Yeah, it's just simple little things that can mean all the difference, right? Yeah. For you to get a run in, you're like, man, that was therapeutic. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and motherhood makes you find the joy in those small things like yep. like never before. Yep. Pick your spots, pick yeah. your pick your wins, right? Yeah, totally. That was a win, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, wow, I love it. So, if if there's someone who's listening to you right now who's in a dark place and they've been struggling and you know whether it's whether it's in motherhood or it's just they're struggling with something else, but they're they're lost, if, if you will. Yeah. What would you tell that person right now listening to you? I would tell them, first and foremost, you are enough. You are enough. You are loved, and mm. you are you are inherently good. And I know that that's hard to believe, but it can be hard to believe when you are in a harder or in a darker place, Mm -hmm. but it's true. And if you're having a hard time seeing that, you know, I would, I would advise to anyone, go find someone to serve because when you're serving someone, Mm. you see them in a way that makes it easier to see yourself more clearly too. Yeah. I love that. So well said. Um, it goes back with, you know, if you want to want to find yourself in God, go serve someone and you'll find yeah. everyone, right? Yeah. <laughs> it just, it makes you see things more clearly. Yeah. No, I love this. Um, if someone wanted to reach out to you, Paris, and get to know you a little better or follow what you're doing and follow your podcast and, you know, subscribe, all that stuff for, for what you're doing, what would be the best way for them to do that? Okay. Thank you so much for asking. 
Um, I really mostly use Instagram. Okay. And my personal handle is at paris.twos. And then my podcast is at kindred underscore conversations. And we are also on all the podcast all platforms. Love it. And twos is spelled T-E-W-S. Yes, that's Just right. want to make sure. And I'll put the links in the show notes so when people, they can just click right to them. And I recommend them doing that. I love what you're doing. Thank Again, you. I love the way that. you carry yourself, Paris. I love your family. I think the world of them. I, I think I know your family better than most just because of these conversations I've had with <laughs> a few of them on here. Well, and thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so thank you for your time. And, you know, if there's anything I can do to help you in the future, I'd be happy to do it. Um, love to have you back on one day and, you know, catch up with where you're at with motherhood and all that fun stuff. And I'm sure all these other things you're going to do are just going to keep growing and be better and stronger and and uh, but yeah, thanks for being such a, a powerful light in in this world and an example of kindness. It really does mean a lot to me and to those that know you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that, and I am really grateful for what you're doing and the goodness that you are putting out into the world. Thank you. It's it's so powerful. Thank and I'm, you. I'm grateful for it. It's positively benefited or benefited me and my perspectives. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Well, there you go, folks. Paris Twos. Please reach out to her. Follow her podcast, Kindred Conversations. Again, you'll see the links in the show notes. Again, a shout out to my sponsors. I love you guys. Thank you so much for believing me. It really makes things so much easier to, to get the message out to so many people. If you have a loved one who's struggling, um, if you have a, a young daughter who's early in motherhood, Uh, Send them a link to this episode and let them listen to Paris. She's got some amazing advice for them and for anyone for that fact. But uh, there would be a good way to break the ice. So um, please share this and thank you again for your support. And Paris, one last thank you to you. Thanks for all you do. Take care, everyone. Love you guys.